Hi guys, uh, so at the end of the last tutorial um, we said we we're going to do the um, the baking because we were looking at the results of the live rendering of this and um, right after that video I got into a lot of problems because uh, originally I was using uh, Redshift 2.6 and then um, lately I installed uh, 3.006 which is the beta version so it gave me a lot of headaches and then um, I was trying to figure out what's not working, this and that. So I finally figured it out. I had to roll back to the stable version. And along the way, I discovered a few things that we may have done better. So that's what I'm going to go back now to show you. But before uh, getting bored with uh, going back, at least I would like to show you the results of where we're going. And, and uh, since I do these tutorials, uh, um, from scratch pretty much uh, and I end up doing it for the second time I sometimes end up optimizing more uh, just like my other tutorials um, so in this case now we can uh, I'm going to actually show you what and uh, how we end up uh, improving it and then the result as well so if I go to my folder my where's my folder here this is work within your projects tutorial so i'm not getting a, a file tree but that, that's what we're going to recreate now however if you go into the render folder which you don't have now because you haven't done it yet this is where we're going to go we will end up creating our buildings and then which i'm going to end up showing to you so if i play this guy so originally these buildings were taking um, around 40 seconds to render um, but and 40 seconds to let's say well, a minute depends on your video card and the, uh, the amount of CUDA cores you have and we did the baking process and now they're rendering in like eight seconds and I think we am pretty because they're not 100% baked because we do want outside sections to um, reflect some uh, to, to respond to the uh, shading so if I try to give some more visibility guys here so it's quite interesting it's a bit blotchy still we can uh, optimize it and then push it even further but the, the baking all these textures do take a little time but since we have like 10 or 20 buildings depends on how you end up going it's just an overnight render to bake out all the textures speaking of baked out textures this is what i can show as well if you go back into the folder um under text this is not the one i need to go to the new one textures buildings so we end up having 10 1k uh, textures but they are with many many idioms so that's what i can show you now so this is how the baked textures look like and that's three by three i think how many files do we have here 12 or three by four because if we end up going into what our uvs now look like compared to what they used to look like they're much more successful now so that's what we're baking and because of this baking we are able to render more than uh, i don't know x amount of uh, buildings so much faster and that's just for the baking of the interiors. We still do uh, leave uh, the outside walls uh, uh, free from an emissive shader so they can receive uh, lights and reflections and etc. Okay, so let's get back to work to see what has been done. So if we dive inside the city source, let's hide everything else we don't need. So basically I discovered that we our UVs were not really healthy so I'm gonna let this cook for a second meanwhile I'm going to bring in the uh, other scene so we can see while this building is getting cooked so we can compare the UVs um, because uh, a lot of stuff that stays outside we don't need we don't even need UVs if you don't want to bake them um, because those are going to be receiving uh, light from the environment itself. We just want to bake interiors because that's the expensive part. So let this cook for a second. 
Okay, this might take a little while, it's still packing the UVs. I can show some of the other buildings meanwhile. There's some other buildings like this. Another building like this. So on and so forth. And this now all is done with a click of a button. We get, we end up getting a, a nice turntable of each of our assets. We're just gonna wait a bit more for the cooking. It's cooking at the moment too. Odinis. Okay. Hurry up. Which one is going to finish first? Okay, let me pause this while these UVs are getting baked. So we can continue. Okay, so the one, the old one is cooked now. So if I look here, the one up. So this is apparently how the UVs were. And I am not sure how I missed that because that's not good for baking, obviously. Um, so that has been fixed now. We're gonna go back and fix that and then even make it more, uh, Family. So I'm gonna bring in the, this is another building, but I'm gonna show you now how the UV is looking, which is so much more cleaner. And I put some red nodes here to show what has been done to be done properly. And if we go up here, and look at the UVs, it's so much better. There's no overlapping whatsoever. Uh, all the windows these are all the inner walls everything can be baked uh it could be a, if we uh, make the uh, windows symmetrical we can probably gain a lot of space but this is literally baking every wall appropriately uh, and and for our purposes it's fine but i'm sure we could squeeze this into a lot bigger space these are, I think these are all the, these are all the floors, upper floor and lower floor, but we are just going uh, full interior. So sometimes necessary, but in our case, since we don't dive into the buildings, but the first the closest we see is something like this. So it's fine. So let's get back to work and let's go up to our external wall preparation, which is here. So I did notice that these UVs were not really good. So after the, one second, let me hook that up properly. So we have this Boolean for our uh, columns and then we remove what columns we don't need. Uh, sorry, the exteriors. And then we do an extrusion and then we remove the interiors, right? And then we were blasting certain things and after after we remove certain area versus uh, just need the space because we, we were taking some of this, splitting it and then passing through another detailing to, to create some um, panels, which will go now, but I'm gonna need a bit more space here. So let's just clean up some space. And then first let's drop in a UV unwrap because this part didn't have the UVs. And some of this is interior, some of this is outside, but we do need it in case we want to go fully baked, like a game engine or something. So this is okay for now, but um, as you can see, the spacing is too much. So I'm dropping the space into zero. So we get more space, uh, more optimized space. Um, but we want to distribute this to more UDIMS. So I'll plug in a UV layout and um, we're gonna, I think it's better if I, okay, so it's packing it. It's probably better if you change to a uh, manual because the UV layout is a little slow. And then we're gonna change the pack into UDIM tiles and then plus, press on this plus tile grid and go two by one. It's gonna spread 
it's two by one. So if I let that cook, I'm just gonna wait a second for this to be calculated. Which is not that slow. Okay, so now as you can see, split in two. Um, so I'm gonna put a red on these just to make sure that I am following what I did. Maybe just a little bit up like that. And then um, I put a group delete because I did notice that I had some unnecessary groups, pretty much everything. So let's just remove everything. Cause I had some, these guys were empty. I don't need them anymore. Um, and then I'm going to create a new group called out oh, and you this group is called out as a primitive and then I'm going to put a UE transform to move these UEs to an empty place which is in this case two to so I'm basically organizing all my UEs so they just go up there and then another these guys are also red because these are new nodes okay I'd like this to be on the left because come from left now this part is UV but this part is not UV which is this part and I did notice one other thing while we were rendering when I end up coming up with the renders which let's just load uh, any any of these for example so we can do a little comparison so this stop. I noticed that our edges were a bit too smooth on that section. So all we get was these little empty areas, even though we had more detail. So now in this version, we're just gonna give them a little bit of an extrusion, a little offset. So this way um, we can get a bit more depth to them. Like, because right now, so if, if you don't have the perfect angle, we not we want this to break the lighting, right? So you, we just want some lights going on and off. So that's what we need to do, adjust here. But first, let's go with our UVs. So again, we are going to need some space. So let's bring this guy down. Um, okay, so we get some more space. Let's just bring it down bring it down so we want to create a, a UVs at a simpler model and ideally then to create the um, the cutting so under this attribute angle 6 where we are bringing back the rest of the uh, excluded uh, section so let's create another UV unwrap with default settings, but again, it's gonna give us a very sparse UVZ, like here, so just bring that down to zero, so it's a bit closer. It's a bit on the edges, but since you're baking it, it's gonna be fine. For painting, if you're painting, we probably needed some spacing. Okay, and then this guy is red. Bring a UV layout. Again, we're gonna change it to uh, UDIM tiles, style grid, two by one. It's also red. Plug it in. Let it cook. Okay. So now, as we process this, things will change. So we need to update certain things. We need to follow up first if you get any output properly if you're losing UVs or not. So okay, I think because we need to bake it from all the way to the bottom, so it will actually bake properly because right now it's still using the, um, I think the first part. So the, this divide will remove um, our UV, so we don't want that anymore. So we can disable it. And then I'm going to let this cook now see what is the output of our UVs.
Almost there. Okay, so our UVs are here, and th these UVs are also here, which we moved up here. So now we want to move these UVs. So now we're gonna create another, actually you can copy this, let's rename this to out actually, which we didn't. And duplicate these guys again. Let's name this one in. And now we're gonna bring in another UV transform. And then the values for this UV transform will be just two. So if we look through now, we have UV our outer walls as well. So we did want to give them a little bit of a more um, volume. So we can do that here, I believe, because we did cut everything. So everything is cut. So I think at this level, we need some more space so we can do it, squeeze in another loop. And let's give some more space here, maybe a little bit more. So we were going through each primitive here. It was this stamp clusters, stamp clusters into the string. Okay, so how many is this? 29, this is 29. How many primitives this object has? 61. So, we did want to probably just change this to, because we're not using it anymore. Let's just delete it. Let's put another loop for each loop, for each primitive that goes through here. I want to split those guys like this. And then I want to, this is staying behind, I need to bring this forward. Like this. Okay, so what I want now is to create a random um, extrusion using random this guy's um, iteration value to create a random, maybe based on position, multiply by random. That would work. Oh, we could also just use the position of the. Um, because they're all in different places, so we don't even need this actually. So what do I have here is now um, just a, a primitive. So let's get maybe the, um, let's create a random ID from the first uh, position in the corner. So we can do that actually angle, actually. So let's drop in a poly extrude. Okay, and let's just drop one. We want this to just go outside. You can close the back as well. Well, we don't need to close the back, but which side is inside, which side is outside, I'm not entirely sure. So we're gonna maybe just close it uh, in case our normals are not good. So we basically we want to randomize this value between this thing. I am not sure which side is in, which side is out. So we can create an extrusion, I don't know, 0 to 0 0.2, that's 20 centimeters, but randomly based on their position maybe. So then we can go down here and then say null in piece and then extrude panel. If you go here, now we can write our expression here, which means that we want to create a random value um, in order for the making it more clear, we can do it here and then just copy the uh, information from there. So let's just do that, it's easier. So let's edit parameter interface, create a little float here. Let's say, just to break it down a bit, random value. So just so instead of writing one really long expression, we can just divide it in two. So here I'm gonna say, get the, point position and it's going to give me this uh, thing that how to use it like we did before but we want zero which means means itself 
and then I want the X returns the X. So if you look at the example section, the first example it says returns the X component of point three. So I want point one or point zero. So I can put another zero, comma. I want the position exactly, and then it says X component. So it's X is fine. So zero. So first one is where am I coming from? Second one is uh, uh, which point? Third one is the attribute name. Fourth one is, if it's a vector, we want the first one. So if you look at it, it's gonna return a number. So this is obviously too big of a number uh, for our uh, extrusion. So we're gonna, we wanna create a random value from this. So this is gonna create, give us a random, but then we, sometimes maybe it could be too big or too small. We just want to uh, fit that value, whatever value to return something zero to 0 0.3, let's say. So let's go here, then we can say fit 0 to 1, and then 0 to 0 0.2. No, we don't need a semicolon here. It should return as a new number and 0 0.2. That was. Yeah, so that's going to return a good number. We just need to make this a negative because we want to push it out. So you just do that. And then this is going to give us a negative value. Copy this number now to the distance and let it cook. Okay, this didn't return. It didn't randomize it. That's weird. Is something wrong? No, and maybe I need to let it cook again. Let's let it cook. We're supposed to use the oh because they're all the same so we need to maybe use a height to be different or a byproduct yes because the edge they're all at the same x position so oh, okay that's that was not my plan so we need to create a random value using these three points maybe that will definitely give something random okay let's go back here in that case we're gonna get this guy here and then put that and then we want this was the x component this is the y component and then another multiply y component so that should give all the time finally a random number if you look here if you look here yes okay so now we have something a lot more interesting than a flat surface. We increase the polygon count, but that's still a bit more interesting. And in case, okay, we're gonna do one more thing. In case our normals are not exactly correct, because if we're gonna change this value to fit from minus 0 0.2 to 0 0.2, so it's gonna give something like this, okay. And then primitive swap, just to make everything. Oh, this is for splitting it, so everything is here. Looking interesting, this. Okay, and then let's cook. Now you're saying, but we extruded the mesh after the UV. Uh, after we make the UV, so they are now uh, overlapping. Yes, they're overlapping. Um, but I don't, because we want outside of the buildings to interact with the lighting conditions and with the reflections and with the objects passing by. Uh, if there's a light source for them to receive the diffuse as well, rather than being baked, that's where we exclude this section from the shader. And it, it actually does receive the uh, proper uh, shading. So we don't, we're not, we are, even though we are baking it, we're not gonna use it. But if we, I wanted to create a completely game engine uh, friendly UV space, uh, it we would probably get rid of these uh, whole, uh, we will definitely make sure that these normals are looking outside and then definitely not have anything inside and then definitely have um, none overlapping UV uh, calculated, which means that we would generate our UVs after the end of this for each, not before. The reason we are building it before is it's so much simpler. 
so it goes much faster has a lot less faces so otherwise it would be a lot longer to process even though now as you can see this uh, extrude panel is slowing it down tremendously but it's gonna be definitely worth it once we render it with all these edges breaking up the silhouette it's gonna look so much better so we're still gonna let it cook it's almost there and then it's gonna definitely add a lot more complexity to our buildings with all the UVs broken pretty much okay let's go here let's look at our UVs again now so some of these are now overlapped but we're gonna be fine for the purpose of this tutorial at this point anyway you you already must have uh, figured out how to you know create complex uh, UV networks you just repeat the repeat this step a few times and you'll be just fine okay and these normals we need to are we, am i deleting the normals here so why am i creating normals here because i do create them afterwards i don't remember so maybe let's go down here to make sure that it is good okay come on okay Okay, um, so that was one UV and I had, I believe, fixed a few here. So with this part, we didn't need UVs because with the glass, we don't want to have UVs and these outer walls, we don't want to have UVs just like the other walls actually. So maybe we should just optimize that accordingly uh, since we're not doing that. Okay, you know what? Let's do that because we just want walls inside walls and floors to really receive um, lighting conditions properly so maybe we are doing a little overkill here so maybe we do but we have some inside parts as well so some of these is inside some of these is outside maybe we should keep it it's just that it's costing us uv space which means it's gonna slow us, it's gonna slow down our um, simulations. Okay, so there was another problem here that I find out that the, there was a problem here and then here. So now let's try to look after that. So our UVs were here. This is not baking properly. Oh, because we were removing the UVs here, which we don't want to remove. Um, attribute delete vertex except UVs so it's gonna come back now okay so if I go to down where we were collecting all our uh, sections together we can see what's not working here which is that I see this section so now let's find out where that is coming from it's not coming from columns not coming from antennas it's not coming from floors not anymore the panels it's coming from the windows so we need to find out what's wrong with our windows actually we don't even need uvs for windows unless we're gonna put some dirt textures on it so our windows were here which means it's inheriting some uv somewhere I'm not sure do we have a uv here somewhere no well I'm going to remove these UVs because we don't need UVs for this section. And let's just select the UVs. So if I go down here again. Okay, so we have one more space here that we can probably use a bit better. And that would be our columns, I suppose. No, our, our, our walls take bigger space, so we can shift our columns. One UV space, right? So that's three. And then if we go to our inner walls, which is this, we can say, I want three by one, which is gonna spread it one more UV space to the right. 
and now if we go further down to see where we're at okay we did make it a bit more complicated than this other guy from the other screen as you can see but um it's roughly the same it's just that this upper part was the outer walls we got them more complex than what we have here so let's now move forward to the render part um, so we already fixed this part which means that we need to re render our um, buildings which I'm not gonna redo it now because we already have them but I'm gonna show you what to do next um, which means now our buildings are ready for some shading work so we can start maybe um, <clears throat> baking them so let's turn on our building look dev so we load one of the uh, actually you know what just to avoid any confusion that I am going to bake these okay so let's go to task graph okay which is gonna render my currently baked textures useless, but that's fine. Um, so just make sure that you don't have any old um, building left from, I, I think sometimes if you leave, the, sometimes it overrides, sometimes it doesn't. So I just choose to uh, actually remove them. And uh, last time, I believe we wrote them in Geo City Walls, but I think City Walls Wedge version one. Yeah, we can probably call this version one still, so it's still valid. So I'm just gonna delete this and I'm going to save my file and rerun this, pause the video, come back once it's done. Um, meanwhile, this means that I don't, I believe I explained, so this is. It means that I don't want one task to pick up more than five uh, cores. I, in total, I have 30, so I can run six at a time. So I click, cook selected. I'm gonna pause the video and then come back. Okay, so we finished uh, baking our buildings now. We can quickly identify them by, you know, loading them back. And then link to uh, our frame range so if you look around we have some more nice details if you had a light we'll just do some more interesting stuff obviously this has an effect on the file size so if it's an overkill just don't do it it may have been let's check some of the buildings quite interesting Quite interesting. This this we could have done um, with, a, with the material as well. To be fair, since these buildings don't don't move, but there are a lot of ways to do this. Still, a lot of ways to optimize these things, like normal maps, etc. Okay, so we have our buildings. Cool. So now we need to see how they render. All right. So let's go into the shop network. Um, I don't think we did that before yet. But so we have these materials, right? um these are just uh, uh materials with just random information and there are as many as what we already made here based on our uh material names so we remember we uh, if we load one of the buildings that we did in the past as well add a new one and then we can blast one and just keep because if we keep, if we load one of the buildings here, and we split them based on as we pack them, so ID zero, primitive zero is the building, office lights, ads, etc. So if I blast one, unpack, I will have my primitive groups which I assign my materials too. so id panels i find a redshift material called id panels if this was mantra it will be the same thing 
So, so we get a unique material for each primitive group that we originally designed. And then if I go into the office lights and unpack them, which is hard to see here, but if I get close, you'll see all those boxes that we designed. These are gonna be all lights. And then what I'm doing is that I'm assembling them in with an assemble soap. So it gives me, says this object has 990 lights. And then I'm adding a point in the center and then I'm giving them a, a random the color, right? Which we have seen here with this light randomize swap. And then it's kind of like a, a recap, but it's important. And then, you know, copying boxes. Uh, we don't need the UVs anymore for this one, to be honest, um, because they are emissive, so we're not gonna randomize it the way. And then they, they have this note called Redshift Office. Uh, emission which is here just the noise plugged in with the color correct that goes into overall color and emission color and the color correct version goes to diffuse color which is output as a surface so now as we left it the last time if we just activate this merge one and then what I did next is because this is now gonna be our um, Redshift proxy representation, so we can remove everything we don't need, which is light color, light intensity. And then, because we are, we are rendering from here, we need those, but not for the baking part. So let's pro now. I'm gonna say bake proxies. Okay, so now if I let's call this to render. This is for look dev, this is for baking. So once we're happy, we're gonna use we're gonna do our look dev here. Once we're happy, we're gonna create our proxies from here. Um, I don't need to do anything else here. So before we actually automate this, we just do a few tests. So this is our building, right? So we had this building with the camera and I, did I have any, so it changes every frame. That's fine. Let's turn this on and let's go out to our look dev turntable. Basically, between a look dev test and a, a bake is just gonna be a, a single button and then we just need to define how many items we want. So let's get some of these values correct, therefore. So in my test, under Redshift settings, Redshift settings, under global illumination, I selected brute force last time and iridium's point cloud. This was, uh, I think it was the other way around, but we're gonna double check. Iridium's Polar Cloud was set, like, set to 32, 2, 1. I believe it was the other way around. We'll double check. I think I was testing it with the uh, older tutorial. Okay, um, and then under optimization, we can probably go 2, 2, 4 for now. Uh, I mean, you can push it more, but we're just doing a test now, so we don't really need big numbers. 16 to 1024 is probably too high for now. So let's go 2 to 256. And right now, the um, uh, let's check if the objects are correct. So we just want building look dev. And I don't want any lights. Because outside, I want, I want to see what I'm going to bake pretty much right now. So then... Um, let's save before anything so nothing breaks. Make sure that okay, this looks good. Oh, by the way, as I was mentioning at the beginning, this is the Redshift version. Uh, this tutorial in the end will show a, a simple version of how to bake and assign textures in Mantra as well. Um, so for those who are not using Mantra and have a bit more patience can do the same thing pretty much. 
Um, so look the test. So the next thing we have to do is to just hit render and see where that tech takes us. Do, do I have any thing on and off? No. Okay. Um, just this part. I'm not so sure. So we'll get back to that. Actually, I think it was Iridian's cache, the brute force and Iridian's cache settings were like this. Where was it? I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to check that. Okay, let's try the same way first we started. Let's hit run up to end play and let's try to see the result. It's gonna be like a two, three minutes render, I guess. Or less. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it's quite noisy and that's because we start with brute force and that's usually uh, we need to go really high numbers so I'm gonna stop this well you can do your own research on this one as well like it's it's just we just have to play with settings until we get like a, a cleanish enough render and uh, so we can just start iridium cache and then point I think this needs to be quite a big number six meters in here and I was putting I think minus two Okay, let's do another render template. A lot of people use, uh, you can use the render shift zone, uh, render view as well. I just guess just used to this, so I just use it. Okay, so the first pass is the irradi irradiance cache. Second one will be the brute force GI. And only then you actually start seeing uh, the result. Okay, we're gonna wait. And then you get our result. So what we need now is probably just to crank up these numbers, do some tests until you're happy with the results. So for example, I think I'm not so happy with the amount of emission I have. Um, but we can output this as a mask as well, to be fair, if you want to see how much light goes through because when because I can see that there's some issues here and there that that's mainly because of the number of rays we're shooting, both from uh, in the most of Iranian's case. So the higher the number, sharper the uh, image will be. But don't forget, this is just we will be visiting by this building so if it's so interesting thing now thing is that let's keep this here i'm gonna lose another screen kill the render now let's try to bake a texture out out of this which means i'm gonna have to put my path for now it's gonna be manual because we want to automate this so if i copy this paste it I'm, pay, I'm pasting this from the other scene and then i'm going to because right now is our loader is linked to the frame so i'm just going to put a zero here okay so that's the where the output will be and how many uvs do we have we're going to have a look it's the same as before so it's three by four which means we can go to our render maps bake render map turned on and our Size is 1024 to 1024 and 4 to 3. So 4 by 3. But what I'm going to do now for is for testing purposes, I'm going to put it to 256. And I'm going to hit render to disk. And it's going to open and play. And it will start rendering our maps. So if we open our folder. which is going to overwrite over my texture folder now, which I'm not very happy with, but that's the tutorial. Uh, so if you go to sci-fi chase, this is going under, as I said, text buildings, text buildings, well, here, here, building project, tutorial, text buildings. So we are overwriting this guy now. 
as you can see. So this is gonna take a bit longer than the beauty itself. So we're gonna pause the video and get back. Okay, so the, the baking process is finished. So we can have a look at the, uh, this is for the first building. We can have a look at the textures. We all obviously made them a bit small for the speed save, but these are all the, um, uh, all four times three, 12 UDIM uh, textures baked. Um, obviously, I think we can do a little comparison to see because this was uh, for testing. We remember we dropped the resolution to 256 by 256 is obviously quite low res. Uh, so <clears throat> I think an overnight bake of uh, 1K maps, at least 1K maps is gonna make a big difference uh, because these ones are gonna look too blurry. So let's do a little test then. This was our building and our original render was here still the same one right yes I'm gonna move this to the other monitor uh, so now what we want to do is to create a new shader version for this asset that uses these textures to render so we'll go on our shop net and we're going to create a redshift network And let's call this baked interior texture or baked well better than baked let's call it optimized textures optimize optimized textures and let's dive inside um i guess we can at this level we will have to promote some stuff but let's go inside first and then we're going to uh we're going to create a texture sampler, RS texture sampler, and then we're gonna create a material, RS material. And then we're gonna connect the out color to emission color, out color in overall to emission color, and out color to surface. And we're going to expose some of these parameters so we can use the textures like file name so let's go up one level select our shading option and then edit parameter interface and then we can say from nodes we can go inside optimized and then redshift material now i think it's here material id we can in order to play with this uh, we can move it here apply and we get all the settings here. Um, we also want to promote the file name outside uh, so we can play with this a bit easier. And when we are doing our tests, so it parameter interface again, from nodes again, and then it's our optimized textures, texture sampler. So if I close all these, I think here we only need the file name, pretty much apply. At the bottom, we're gonna have this probably nicer if we had that at the top so let's rearrange it let's make this smaller so we can see what we're doing and then let's move this guy all the way to the top and apply okay so we have it here so um so where was our texture we baked it under <clears throat> this path and which is coming from the uh, redshift Robnet. so let's copy paste this and then it's, it's for building zero so let's pick it up and then we need to replace the dollar f with the uh, udim settings which is called in in you can find this in the uh within the half files as well if you do this udim curly brackets uh not the, the smaller and bigger sign and it's gonna work just fine so i'm going to pause the video now so i can uh check my settings to do a test render okay and then now um, there was a little interruption so we can now this one is called optimized textures okay so let's play with the settings we will be able to um, so based on how much contribution we want from the environment or not we need to play with the uh, reflection color 
base uh, we should have the reflection general settings colors I probably it's better if you just adjust it from here it's gonna be easier because the, the, the it's a bit more optimized here to be honest okay well we have the optimized texture we, we can play with more often after so um because I don't want to break my look dev geometry I'm going to create some space here to create a, a renderable version that is using this shader so let's create a geometry node and let's uh, I guess we can name it building optimized dive inside we're gonna object merge we're gonna object merge to render I guess we can or, or maybe yeah I guess this should do this is, we can just bring it here um i guess to render because we are delete we were deleting some attributes here so i'm not sure if i want to delete them because this these attributes are required for instancing um lights in redshift in k but we are using the texture shaders we are using texture emission so yes we don't need them so we can actually keep them deleted that's fine which means to render the last node is okay so then um, now what I don't need just to make sure that um, because this is going to be the one that we are baking so we make sure that we don't have anything that is not needed and there are some colors that we can use as well but I don't need any of this pretty much I don't need the name I think the redshift proxy not does that but that I just uh, make sure that it's uh, I keep it clear pretty much so then now I have the groups and there's one group here which I don't need so let's do a group delete it somehow made its way which is this guy okay so I have the material uh, which I'm not gonna need because we, we need to reassign the materials basically so we can delete the material as well Okay, so now we have the bake material and we have, we are basically, we have the groups as well. So let's reassign our materials. So <clears throat> this time we're gonna need five groups. First one is gonna be ID emissive and we can select our ID and you see we don't have it here here and then we can go to the next one and then we want our glass to be calculated as well we don't want it to read anything from anywhere so RS ID glass okay so the third one is ID panels so we want ID panels to be uh, receiving uh, lights as well which is uh, from coming from outside pretty much as ID panels for one is gonna be ID frame that's the edge of the window so we don't want that to be calculated as well ID frame ID frame here we should have ID frame and then the fifth one is everything but these guys in case we skip something which is gonna be optimized textures okay so let's go out so we use this one so look dev let's call this uh, optimized okay this one doesn't need for now we'll start one by one we don't need any lights at the moment we don't want to bake anything and then let's make sure that this is the only thing we're using which is this guy um, 
for testing purposes actually let's render the old one for once as well so we want to render the look dev which uses the shaders to render uh, our <coughs> building with GI on so we're gonna go here let shift GI as usual uh, not here sorry this one so it's gonna be reading cache brute force to brute race I guess we need like at least 2k minimum to have something less noisy um, and let's hit what are our sample settings maybe we drop them down that's they're fine but maybe 4 by 128 let's do a render to and play but remember these are uh, uh, 256 kilobyte uh, uh, resolution pixel uh, 256 by 256 pixel uh, texture so they're gonna be quite blurry now but because they took like I don't know 20 minutes to bake at most and this one is using look dev so let's keep this on top let's go object now we're gonna switch to building optimized and if I didn't set everything wrong it should render something similar if not the same but we don't need this time all these high settings two by 32 maybe let's render to see what comes out okay our emission settings are probably not correct because it looks like our lights are off pretty much so let's go to our shader and maybe dive into our overall maybe our emission weight is too low do I have the emission weight? okay our emission weight was close our emission color is coming from the shader so let's hit the render again okay right now there's a big difference because our texture maps are very very small but um, once we crank these values up to this 1k and increasing the uh, uh, while we bake we need to we will have to increase the um, where is it the I guess the settings we need to test these and we need to get some proper numbers which I'm going to bake after this tutorial but based on the previous buildings that I already did they were giving these uh, renders which were pretty already uh, good but we had these uh, other lights that I'm going to show how as well uh, some environment lights so we don't get the black area so let's maybe turn those on just for this sake of testing uh, that's optimized so we want our advertisements as well we want our candidate lights maybe external light and environment light I think I want my environment light to be a lot less strong even like that and then let's do another render okay so um, what I'm going to show next is how do we use PDG to get that automated so once we press this button we bake all the textures then we bake all the buildings to make uh, rendership proxies which which we'll do next now 
and then how do we render them all and then make a contact sheet I believe it should load I should have them but I don't have them at the moment I, uh, I thought I rendered it but I guess I didn't and that makes the uh, using the image magic as you might already seen on the uh, Houdini tutorials how do we create a contact sheet out of it so let's get to that now so the other thing that we want to make sure that we have the most optimized solution for this huge scene that we're gonna render our home computer is to create the render shift proxies so basically a render shift proxy is take this state of this geometry and bake it to a render shift uh, um, object that can render just uh, as a uh, as a proxy so it never actually does any conversion during runtime. time in order to do that we need to create our proxies which is gonna be under here we can put a null object let's call it out mesh <clears throat> under here we can drop in a redshift proxy output redshift proxy output plug it in and under the archive settings it's automatically connected but i just do it it's a habit so now we need to create some smart naming convention so it works with the uh, pdg but uh, i'll get there now by so <clears throat> actually we should probably test before we do anything in that case i'm gonna fetch the path from the other scene which is here so I'm gonna call it, I already have it, right? I wanna do the zero first, I wanna overwrite this. So just select it and then pretty much hit render to disk. So that's gonna be output from Houdini as a redshift object, which is now done. It's the new one, okay. So now we need to set up a network to render these. So how do we render them? I'm gonna turn this off, I'm gonna turn this off. We're gonna create a new geometry node. We're gonna say building proxy. Maybe building RS proxy. So there's a redshift tab here. This is like just converting this to like a packed object to do instancing almost. Um, right now I'm gonna do it manually. So under the proxy, enable proxy file, copy paste, and we're loading zero. So as it is, it's not gonna do anything, but what we can do now, it needs to do is that it becomes empty, it still doesn't know that it's a proxy object. In here, we need to put a redshift proxy swap. And as soon as I do that, it fetches the address and it gets the bounding box. So then if I go out and replace the optimized with RS proxy only, now we have something a lot more optimized. And if I put render and play, it should render the same but the loading times will drastically change once we have so many of these objects all right cool okay let's close this object so let's set up our pdg network i'm going to put this on the manual just want to push these guys down a little bit okay so let's create a pdg network so let's go uh, drop in a top network here and then we can, I guess, we can pull this down a little bit. Everything is same color. Let's organize this a bit more. Okay, we can say, because this part is pretty much a live section, this is our optimization section, and these are output. We're gonna name this bake and render okay so let's give this guy a different color maybe let's pull this down this network can be okay so this part was the environment let's make it green this part is the look there let's make it blue this part is a bit more crucial so we're going to pinkish these are the buildings so that's going to be our environment which we are going to replace each one of these buildings that we showed before 
with all our proxies with textures okay so let's dive inside <clears throat> on top we're gonna drop in a wedge node this is gonna be responsible for changing the buildings change building okay after the change building so uh, we need to specify so we have 10 buildings we have 10 buildings and um, we want to export this to the environment and create a, a, a parameter uh, to wedge by pressing this plus button so now what we want to change is the attribute that's going to change the building so let's enable this target parameter and then what we want to we want to create this wedge parameter which is going to be an integer and it's going to change from 0 to 9 because we have 10 wedges okay so in now we need to find where we're gonna affect with this tool is actually what we're loading which is gonna be this so then which means we need to change this last digit because we have 10 buildings and just 0 1 2 3 so which means that this number instead of frame dependent now it's going to be attribute dependent so we can do edge ID uh, well actually I'm gonna do it like this so if I want to override it to scrub it it's gonna be easier so let's just create an integer here and let's call it wedge ID wedge ID okay and then apply and then type here at sign wedge ID and then I guess we can then copy paste this to here so like this I can just actually change it overwrite to see what I want to load without going to the tops network so now this is linked which means that when it needs to process that's how it's gonna process and so the second step was for us to uh, we need to where is it where is it, where is it? out network uh, not tops tops second step is going to be uh, baking but I want to partition now everything by index partition by index so because this is going to create an index ID and then this is going to partition them like the first wedge second wedge third wedge etc um, so the second thing is now I want to run a redshift command a redshift node so for example in in, uh, if you go Houdini native, you don't need to do anything extra because you already have a, a rope mantra. But because it's redshift, we don't have a redshift mantra here. So we need to use a fetch command called rope fetch uh, in order to, to run this command. So we're going to call this bake all textures. And in the rope path, that's where we're going to get our out look dev optimize so this was our bake test so you can drop this here actually i think we should give it a better name bake textures and we're gonna change the frames for batch to zero uh, what does that do is if i do a mouse over it's gonna give us a little explanation by default when this parameter set one each work item cooked as a separate job when this parameter set to a value greater than one Work items is grouped into batches. I think zero does is the same thing. Um, not sure. I think one should also work. That's pretty. Uh, I mean, it's worth trying. I think. So, um, so basically, this is gonna output files to our folder. But then we need to be careful on where we are outputting our files because we need to read them back. Is that means we need to now also update this output folder with our attribute that we are loading the buildings from or the wedge id in that case that would also work um, so we're gonna change this to 1024 as well i probably will do a few more tests to get the noise out to clean it up before we actually send the whole thing to render 
Um, let's make sure that we are using building look dev. Yes, correct. Okay, let's go back to tops. So this guy is going to bake our textures by, it's also going to change the folder number, uh, folder name. So then what we want to do is to link, uh, put a textures and bake our proxy. So we're going to do another rope fetch and let's call this bake all proxies. And now, however, this in this node here, we can do a little bit, um, I think, optimization in terms of, uh, because it's gonna use Redshift, but it's not gonna use a Redshift GPU to render. So what we can do in that case is, I'm gonna unlock this, because by default, our local scheduler is the boss and it, it, it lets uh, how this network should run. Because we're gonna use a GPU render and because I have only one GPU, I'm gonna set it to single. So unless otherwise specified, all of these nodes are gonna run as a single task and it's never gonna run two jobs at a time. However, that's a waste of CPU for baking all proxies. So in that case, I can go to the scheduler and I can do an overwrite and I can say CPU for task 40, mass test 30. So how does that work? That for my computer, that means I have a thread per CPU, I have 32 cores. So I wanna always leave two cores alone so uh, I can do my other things, maybe play games meanwhile. And then I want tops to take the rest of the cores, divide it by four to uh, run as many uh, jobs as possible uh, that is not passing more than four cores. So it, in that case, it's gonna be 30 divided by four. So um, now we need to fetch our, I'm going to lock it here, that we put it in here, was it here? Yes, so this is gonna run this guy. And I want all frames in, oh, this is not the random node. This is the bake proxy, this is fine. So this can be zero as well. It's gonna be a single frame. Uh, do that on the frame zero. And that should do the trick, except now I need to deal with this part. In this case, I was using wedge ID. You see, um, it, I could do the same thing here as well. It's not, there are not really very specific rules. So, because for the baking proxies and the output file name, I use wedge ID. Whereas on the bake all textures, Output. I put a, the, the path to the loader. In this case, I can also do this. It's not gonna make a difference. Um, but there is one more thing we need to be careful now is that which texture we are loading because in the previous one, it's gonna be baked. Uh, then we need to load them properly, which means we need to define this path to be not hard coded as it is now. So let's find out how we can link it. Um, because that's the one that's gonna be uh, creating the, the, the this, this uh, integer is gonna be responsible for uh, loading the proper texture. So we're gonna change that with a wedge ID. So every time the wedge is changed, it's gonna load the correct texture. Um, reflection zero. Okay, so what I want to do is we did bake this properly, right? So I think we need to set these settings a bit more smart must and then probably add some roughness but this is completely up to you and this is the part bas basically you're going to be setting up here while it depends on how you want your buildings to look really um, optimized textures but i think for the optimized textures we really don't need any diffuse so i can probably we should probably uh, do some tests before baking it or um, to see how our shader look because all of these baked texture settings will get baked into our proxy. So it's better you guys do your tests and then once they're looking good, once they're looking good, then we'll bake it out. Okay, so now we can just uh, double check everything. So we're changing the buildings, the attributes is connected. 
We are changing, we are setting the partition by index. We are baking our textures. As we bake our textures, this is going to be running. The output is connected properly. And then the, the shaders that will load is the textures that will be shifted, connected properly. Um, and then if we go uh, to our rock network, and then we just want to render these. We want to render this and I want to render this as well for doing some kind of like a turntable so we can create another this is for optimized testing I guess we can create another one called turntable look the optimized baked turntable baked turntable and we want this to be, I think, uh, 32 frames, but we don't define that from here. Tops is gonna manage that. Um, let's put our, these as a four slides, external, RS proxy, that's fine. And we are not baking anything. We don't need uh, global illumination. We're gonna define the settings just a little after. Um, let's create another fetch network here. And let's call it, render turntables so we can investigate our buildings are healthy or not in the end and then here though this is where we're going to define how tops to render what and how many frames so that's where we're going to say first let's plug in our node from the out context bake turntable so we want a frame range, we can break that, 0 to 35, and we're going to give a 10 degree every frame. But um, because we, I have one GPU and uh, we don't want tops to take over to start rendering things separately, I will force it to go all frames in one batch. So it's going to do a frame by frame instead of trying to do many frames at a time. Um, that rest should be okay. So this is going to bake all textures. This, so this is a render job. This is a render, this is a, a proxy job, this is a render job, okay. Obviously, we can link that tops, another uh, wedge on top to shift our buildings as well if you want it, but we're kind of like making a bit more granular like this. So if something breaks, we can uh, make it look a bit uh, easier to manage. Like we could make that a prerequisite for this to run. We could probably do a top fetch and bring it in here pretty much but we don't need it at the moment okay so i want this data to be the output at the moment um now i just want to make sure that i have good settings for rendering so what i want to do is because this is where we're gonna sorry this is where we're gonna bake our objects as proxies so i want to make sure that this looks as good as possible before i bake it before I, and then I want to make sure that the textures are high quality by changing the settings in the previous uh, render node. So if I now go to my book dev optimized, so now I think I can play with uh, my progressive render view. So I'm gonna save and open render view. This is the redshift render view. From here, I can select the rock, which is book dev optimized. And I'm gonna go bucket, so it's gonna avoid progressive rendering. And let's select the camera. Let's say render again. Oh, this is gonna render the proxy. We don't want to render the proxy. We want to render the optimized. Look, the optimized. This happens sometimes, get stuck. That's fine, it's still the same. Look, they're optimized. So that's gonna render our optimized version. But our turntable will be rendered by proxy. Okay. And I guess we can do the same here. Okay, let's do it again. Open the Redshift Renderer. I think we need to do it again. 
clicking on it a bit stronger. Okay, render. So this should render the optimized version. It means that we should be able to play with the shader live, like a progressive render. Um, do we need to? This is the part we. Is it loading? I don't think it's loading the shader because we linked our shader now. We linked our texture. So let's set it to zero for now. And let's not forget to put it back. Okay, so it's loading proper textures now. Uh, so I, does putting reflections make a difference? That's what I want to see. It does. And I want to give a roughness of 0.35 actually I want to make this as fast as possible so I'm gonna kill the reflection because we just want reflection on the mirrors and whatever reflection there was should have been baked into the uh, walls when we use the high-res version so make sure that the more we can shave the better so that's the reflection we have, if you go emission two, I think we're gonna get just something brighter, but I think we can overwrite this uh, in the RS. We can overwrite some of these uh, in the uh, render shift proxy material settings as we, um, and then there are some optimizations we can do. So we make, we can say that, hey, don't do more than three or uh, five uh, refraction during this object, etc. So I know that this doesn't have to reflect a lot at all because we, it's baked. There's no refraction on this object. You can just refract once and then we can probably put this down to three just to make sure that it's not making any difference. Um, now let's go into, I don't see the um, diffuse settings here. This is a coating, this is overall, advanced, diffuse scale. Okay, I'm gonna dive in. Probably just break these settings and then go zero. Everything's connected to emission, so everything should be just coming out of the box as it is straight from the texture. Um, okay, I think we can leave it as it is. Let's go out. Uh, I think I want to QC if the reflections are working, so I'm going to turn on in this render. Maybe just put a giant big light on the side to make sure that it's working, but we can also turn on the ads. Let's do another render. I just want to make sure that the advertisements are reflecting off the uh, glass shader. But I believe they do. If we go before and after, maybe if we find a proper angle. Let's turn on the ads so we see them. I guess an angle like this should help. Okay, out, render. It's hard to tell from here, but now if you render it with and without, I think it's going to let us know. I don't think the wind, I don't think the glass is working. Uh, let's go in here. Are we removing any glass? No, we're not. We're cleaning up. We have some glass. Glass shader is working, I suppose. We can check it here. ID panels, ID metal, ID glass. So what if it's, it put a blast here to make sure that it is working? ID glass delete one selected yeah there are glasses working um is it yes our glasses in the dark place 
Okay, um, let's now double check again, maybe without the ads, as I said. Maybe our glass is not reflective enough, which we can play with. No, it's actually working. We can see the difference here. We are actually reflecting fine. Okay, so that's working. That's good. Uh, we can keep, but we don't want to bake that in, in case we want to move the uh, advertisements around. And I think we don't want to bake, but this is for our turntable. This is for our look dev. Okay, let's go back to the textures to plug in our bake all textures. Go here, sorry, not here, to our shader to put our um, the wedge. Backtick, which I did backtick. Okay, so to change the shaders, that's correct. Reflection, this is the reflection of roughness is one, maybe. I don't know, I don't wanna bake anything wrong. Uh, just keep playing with these settings and then until you're satisfied, pretty much. Um, we can probably add a little roughness. It's gonna diffuse the uh, render a bit, the, the roof, the um, indirect light a bit more. I guess that's gonna help with the shading. So there's less um, link to reflection. There's less uh, noise. Okay, increase the samples as well. And this should do the fine. We don't want any glass color. Okay. Um, Let's put our camera somewhere like this. Maybe like this. We don't need this guy. Uh, we want to animate so they can do the turntable. So we're gonna put a null. We're gonna animate this now. Let's call this rotate. And let's connect to building ads and building optimize. Sorry, not optimize. Uh, proxy so they can rotate let's give it since we said 35 we need to give 350 degrees and then plus the first frame so we can set this to 35 okay I change the frame range to 35 in the building ads we want to visualize our out display we want to re render our out instances which are our advertisements and then the proxy is as it is so if we press play it should oh, it's nothing is turning is it because oops sorry that value should be changing our building should be rotating but they're not because i'm not visualizing this i'm visualizing this this should be turning advertisement will be turning now as soon as i change this to none as well not from here but here when i'm outside let's go outside network and okay everything is turning cool um before pressing render i think that's also i'm just going to recap again it's going to load 10 separate buildings wedge count 10 start to end 9 which is changing an attribute of a loader this is gonna partition all my streams by index we're gonna bake all the textures which we're gonna put it back to 1k 4x3 dims ideally quite high settings so we have less noise so i suggest just rendering this with this off just to see what it comes out which we're gonna do now before we hit render uh, we are making sure that our whatever variable is connected to wedge oops is hooked up in every file write file outputs so we don't overwrite any uh textures or objects we're gonna write out which is also including loading the textures to render which is here optimized textures the wedge id is connected again so make sure so the tops will make sure that it's loading the correctly baked texture so now last thing again like i said we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little test here 
to make sure that our settings are nice. So let's go one. It's gonna load a different building. Oh, this is this is overwritten by our top, so we can change that. That's easy. So we can wedge ID overwrite. I, I don't remember how to overwrite target parameter capture. Should be outputting it here. Oh, because we can, yeah, we can do that from here. So I need to bring that guy in here. Not that, the attribute itself, drag and drop. If I say capture, it's you can't capture one. If I say it's not updating it, I want it to update. There was a way to overwrite the value backwards from here, but I guess we can do it manually for now. This is the attribute, so if I go, I guess, just to make sure it's loading the correct stuff. Okay, so that's another building. Maybe let's say this is our angle. Let's do a... Let's do a little render now to make sure that we have enough quality to bake, which means I'm going to disable bake render map and I'm going to open the render view let's say first open render view there's a little setting that came with the latest uh oh because i'm back in an older version so it's not here anymore okay that's fine okay so let's uh this is the camera but i want to render i want to render my Big textures for testing. Hit play, uh, render. So it's gonna render. So we can play with our settings. Always on top. Always on top. So we can see it. Okay, let it render. Oh, I didn't press play. it's going to be doing I think it's doing the um, irradiance cache first okay I'm gonna pause this video now once I have the good settings we're gonna together uh, kick off the whole baking process okay so the frames came out i think we, we probably don't want them to be so dark i think that's because i don't have any other light let's put some let's put up the environment light and the external not the external yeah we can bake the external light as well let's just see how it's gonna look it took one minute 56 seconds to render okay so i did go through some settings and it seems like um although a little bit maybe higher quality it, this value seems to be uh in the ballpark let's kill the render that's also depend on your uh, gpu i have a 2080 uh so 8k uh brute force gi rays this is this can be less i think it's six bounces overkill let's keep it two for the sake of uh rendering um reflection refraction combined that's probably okay if in the it's in the ballpark uh i guess we can go less samples for min and then max probably 512 okay so um i think now we are ready to go so this was our big textures just before anything let's just turn this on let's double check our output paths are correct and we're gonna bake this out so let's go out context what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a separate name so I don't overwrite. This will be backup. 
and then in the uh, RS proxy is fine. We were writing in the geo, so I want to delete these. Actually, yeah, that's fine. And then textures, buildings. I wanna rename this as well. So back up, and then I am ready to bake my textures. So we're gonna right click and cook the selected node and it's gonna launch a bunch of jobs which we can monitor from here. But these will take a while. I mean, it will be, it could be um, probably safe to go some really low settings for the baking and rendering and to do it at least once to make sure that it is working, it should work. Uh, I believe everything is hooked properly, um, but for the sake of testing, probably you can just go and like really make the texture small again just so you do the first run instead of like 10 hours maybe it will complete it in one hour just for the testing it's probably not a bad idea um but i'm gonna launch this now i'm gonna save it and then launch it okay see you in the next video um before finishing it's probably worth showing this as well so we can just uh, if you want to remove everything that you did that doesn't work you can right click anywhere and send dirty selected I can do this all, or you can say dirty uh, selected node result from this so it's gonna remove so then if you want to QC if these steps are gonna work what you can do is to select each and then go cook selected and then it's gonna say oh, okay I already found the building so I don't have to do anything because they're already on disk so if you want to uh, see how the next step works you can select each one and it's gonna give you this one is connected to this building etc so now we can select the big texture so uh, what I want to do is actually I do want to do a single test. I want to go change build. Oh, this is a, uh, we skipped this. I just caught it. We did not, did we remove the settings from here? I remember this was set already. So let's just make sure that it's correct. Target parameter was the building loading. And the attribute name we managed was wedge ID, which we said we're gonna do this from zero to nine. Uh, so how many which counts? So 10, so zero to nine. But I do wanna uh, test one now. So I'm gonna change the which count to zero, and then I'm gonna go uh, which count to one, and then start n to zero, because I do want to uh, test this. If I go right click, cook selected, it should just give me one, which means it should bake one, output one, and render one so i'd like to try that and then for that to work i'm going to go and change my settings again to maybe this time 512 512 because i do want to see if the one step will go forward before firing and forgetting it for the whole night so let's save let's right click on the last node cook selected node and if it errors here it's gonna error here it's gonna error here so we can investigate if there's any issue with our setup which we did connect this so ideally if i click on this it should go oh it doesn't so building look dev load buildings loads building it's error building look dev load buildings oh this is uh, something we forgot as well so maybe we should remove that also Okay, so did error. We don't know why. Let's go and let's check why error. It could be the same reason. It's giving us a segmentation fault. And this time for one frame. It shouldn't give us a segmentation fault. Why is it giving us a segmentation fault? Uh, let's dirty it again. Try again. Is it correct attribute? Oh, it's called wedge ID, so that's wrong, obviously. So let's make sure that that's correct. Okay. Which means this needs to go like this, this needs to go like this. 
which probably broke our tops again. So let's kill it all. Dirty. Select dirty all actually. I think there's a not here. Or dirty all. Okay. Um, so now I'd like to investigate if this is gonna break itself. If I launch it straight from the textures node, which is this one. So I'm gonna save it again. This is supposed to be outputting to zero. This was load. It's called the wedge ID. That's not correct. Uh, maybe that's why it's failing. Maybe we should make sure that we are copying proper paths because I did connect it from the other scene and then I didn't write it properly. So what about our shader? Our shader was using the which I did, which is fine. Okay, let's try again before saying that doesn't work. Probably connected wrong nodes. Otherwise we'll close it in, maybe reopen it. Sometimes actually when you fail rendering or hit escape too many times, it doesn't flash the GPU memory. It might end up causing such errors. Uh, one way to check this in uh, Linux at this is to uh, still erroring, which is causing the rest of it to error. Let's check again. Segmentation for wedge parameter building look the load buildings which I did not find. Okay, that's quite straight. So let's find what is it not finding. It says the wedge ID is not fine. It says it can. Oh, that's because of this building look dev. Because it's we broke the link. That's why sometimes it's very important just to make sure that you got the right thing, or even actually that's probably a safer way to go. Object um, building look dev load buildings. Wedge ID. And that's now probably it's better. Let's save again. Let's dirty it all. Okay, hopefully it's gonna work now. Uh, as I was saying, the one way on Windows you have a um, the GPU, the programs that shows how busy your GPU is. On Linux, we have something similar as well. I should be somewhere here already. For me, GPU stat. That should return me my the status of my GPU. There's a lot of tools. So basically, if it goes up to 100% doesn't error, as I was gonna say, it should work, but it still didn't. Let's investigate further. Okay, so it did find it now, but it still caused a fatal error, and we need to understand why. It doesn't make much sense to me, so I'm just gonna try closing and opening Houdini. Um, actually, I'm gonna try. Yes, I'm going to try closing and opening Houdini. We, we save this as zero two buildings part three. So let's close it and open it. Trash can. Let's launch it in here again. I'm typing on the other screen, so that's why you don't see it. Okay, um, let's try to run it locally to see if it's gonna output to our folder, which is here. Sci-fi chase. Text. Ah, not this one. Sorry, this one. Tax buildings. It tries to load and then it fails. So something broke there. You can keep this on as well. Let's see if running it straight from the redshift will fail. Which shouldn't because there is not much of a difference. We're just gonna make sure that everything is set correctly, I suppose. Or maybe it's supposed to be framed for batch one or all frames in one batch. No, 
okay let's try again so this is where it's failing um, the other thing that I think uh, make sure that maybe default headlight creation is off in case you don't have any lights but I have but if you don't in your future settings it's gonna create a headlight and then your bakes will look wrong um, but that should be it really let's let's try to render to disk Okay, I'm gonna come back once this is over to see if it's errors or not. And finally, uh, I, it, this has been giving me a lot of segmentation faults and um, I wasn't sure what was going on. Uh, I think it was sometime Redshift related. It is not in the uh, tutorial laws in the Documentation also, I've been going through the documentation, but it looks like um, it is on my machine for some reason. When I said GI to irradiance cache, then the brute force, I get a segmentation fault immediately. So I changed it to brute force to irradiance point cloud instead. And, or you can just go like brute force to brute force, just to make sure that you, just make sure that your uh, uh, textures are no noise free. And meanwhile, I, what I also did is that since I was, since we were not using the outside section, since we do want, um, let's go to perspective view. Since we do want only interior floors, let's say, oh, can I select this guy? Yeah. Uh, like, through this window, we want everything to be baked. All the rooms, basically. It's very hard to see from here. All the rooms and all the walls we want to be, want to be baked. Um, what I did is that I did exclude this outside part and I did disable the extrusion that we did. So you, which you can uh, go back. It was because it was adding another 50 gig, uh, 50, like it was almost making the file size more than double. So I think if we need to, we should probably first distribute our uh, building uh, buildings with these most optimized versions. And then I think if we need a higher res version, then we should probably uh, make a separate one. So on the paneling level, I disabled the UV layouts and then uh, on the uh, out panel that this is the part where we put the um, out uh, out panels uh, UV settings we, I disabled that as well and then here the extrusion part I just brought back a divide remove shared edges to do a cleanup and then just copying the um, it's not manual but doesn't show just copying back the UVs onto the for each which you can find all the latest uh, file structure here the, the edits here in this file so then um, in the end, because our paneling was going on this upper section. So now instead of baking four by three, we can just bake four by two textures, which means that on our render uh, tiling, we need to go four by two. And finally, with fingers crossed, I will die here. And then I'm gonna say save. We're just gonna try only one now wedge again as I said it. So which means this should now work. Let's cook it and wait a bit so to see if it returns what we need. And if it does, we're good. Okay, waiting. GPU is running. GPUs keep running. Okay, so far it's not erring, so I'm gonna believe that it's working. Let's go into... Other in projects, sci-fi chase, texture, and now it's baking. Hopefully this will go through. All right, um, I guess it's gonna take another 10, 15 minutes to do the rest. 
So um, let it, I'm gonna let it run, and then in the next video we'll have a look at the result. Um, I'm gonna run these overnight for all of the buildings as well to bake out uh, our uh, instances. And now finally we are going to start rendering the city uh, with all the bake textures. Um, and then I guess we can put some architectural lighting, some city lighting and then some volume to uh, give it a bit more depth before we move forward to start building our traffic system. And so finally we can animate our ships to chase each other and do their FX thing. Alright, thank you for watching.